Hello, I'm your host, Jackie Allen, and welcome to our premiere show of Word Now. We own our destiny now. The teen talk show where your voice will be heard and opinion will be taken seriously. Today's show will start with showing how our community is involved in having concern for our youth. Our Youth, Our Future Foundation and Corporation held its second annual SOS, Save Our Sons, Save Our Sisters Youth Summit. It was held at the Hampton Roads Convention Center featuring city officials, youth professionals, and representatives from various youth organizations in the surrounding areas. Them about choices, and one of the things that I share with them is I, I see individuals who are your millionaires, billionaires, the entrepreneurs, the scientists, the astronauts, the doctors, the lawyers on a regular basis. However, when I see them, they typically have shackles on their feet and they have handcuffs on their hands. And I tell them the difference between them having a title behind their name and a number on their back is just one choice. They can do everything well, but make the one bad choice, and that one bad choice can lead to their destruction. I, I just love the fact that we're having this uh, forum and that there are people who have a passion for our youth. Our youth are truly our greatest asset, and I believe that we need to pour more resources into our youth. We need to keep them out of our judicial system because it's a win-win. They're successful, and our community is safe. We talk about the concept of a village raising a child. This program is a manifestation of part of the village helping to raise our children. There's so many challenges that our young people face and from so many venues and avenues that were not um, in vogue or in place when I was a young person. So consequently we need many, many multiple efforts by people like SOS to make a difference in our young people. Every chance we get, we need to get in front of our young people and give them encouragement and rules and regulations to play the game by. Today is a spectacular day for our youth. It gives them an opportunity to hear from people who have lived their life experience and, and sharing their life experience to give them an opportunity to see for themselves what others has done. Not only that, but it's a spectacular day so teens and young adults can really be themselves and really learn what it means to make good choices. So it's a phenomenal day. What I have been um, privy to or, or witnessed while I was here is they're getting a lot of uh, information on life experience because they have not, they, not to say they have none, but they have very little, but it's an opportunity for them to see through someone else's eyes, someone else's uh, life and, and the decisions that they made or the decisions that they wish they did not have made. Uh, and so I think what they're going to walk away with, with more confidence, more knowledge and, and uh, access to resources and knowing that people are here and people really, really care. Any time we have an opportunity to speak to our teens, to speak and pour into our teens, we need to do that because, because of life, because of what they think about themselves or how they feel about themselves, their greatness is covered. They can't see it. They don't know how to tap into it. And so events such as today like this helps them to tap into their greatness so that they can walk in their greatness and stand in their brilliance. So I look forward to attending more events like this, speaking at events like this, as well as pouring into teens and young adults so they can be who God created them to be. Uh, when I was growing up, we had these kind of programs, but not to the extent of the way that we're doing them now, where we have elected officials, we have people who are really doing things in the community, people who are on television, uh, actually reaching back and delivering a helping hand to the community, which is something that we never really got when I was coming up. You know, we had policy makers, but we didn't have that intimate connection. And that's something that we have here that I'm proud of. I feel like the youth are getting life lessons out of this. Uh, they're walking away with uh, a more direct piece of wisdom that they can get from someone who's had such an intimate belonging to the community. You know, these are people who are from the same neighborhoods these kids are from. We're talking about downtown Newport News, Hampton, and Norfolk. So. It's a great thing when you can have people who've made it out to reach back and lend a helping hand. Save Our Sons Youth Summit is so important to our young people because as adults, 
we know the answers to a successful life and it's our required job to make sure that they get the information that we had or needed when we were young. So I really uh, applaud uh, Brad Burton for putting this youth summit on. He has some of the best speakers, uh, some of the best volunteers, and he's been out on the forefront for our youth for years. Uh, he and I started out working when now we were in our 20s, working in a program to help juvenile offenders, and he's always been super dedicated to helping improve the lives of young people. I think it's important because we need to provide every opportunity that we possibly can to support our youth in the community today. I mean, I think as, as parents, as fathers, mothers, mentors, and role models, we need to give our children every opportunity that we possibly can to support them. They're our future. In the next five to 15 years, a lot of these individuals are going to be our, our mentors, parents, and other individuals that are going to soon be hopefully providing the same information to other children in our community. As you can tell, we as adults were very concerned for our youth, but this SOS Youth Summit was a wonderful experience. And next we have our health and fitness specialist, Brandon Fry. Hi, my name is Brandon Fry with Keep Fit, Fun and Training from Ambitious Underdog Fitness. Today I'm gonna to talk about lower back pain. Now, lower back pain is an epidemic that affects Americans from 25 to 60, causing $50 billion deficit in the workforce through loss of labor, lawsuits, medical damage, and other epidemics. Now, only 1% of lower back pain requires surgery, where the other 99% can be prevented through lifestyle factors and working out. So today, I'm going to show you a couple of workouts where you can prevent lower back pain effectively so you can have a long, vital life. Now first what I'm going to show you is an exercise, a simple exercise called a plank. Now what you do is you get on the ground, once you get on your elbows, keep your shoulders straight, I want you to keep your buttocks out the air, your back straight, and I want you to hold. Now what you're doing with this is you're incorporating your core muscles, which when a lot of people have lower back pain, it's because they have a weak core and it causes lordosis or an unnatural curvature of the spine. So what you do is you reinforce your core muscles to reinforce your lower back muscles, and that way you'll be able to sustain yourself better and you won't have lower back pain. And you can do something simple as holding a plank for four sets of 30 seconds. And then a lot of planks have different variations. You can do it on your elbows, you can do it on your hands like this, or you can have a different variations with it when you Go up, up, you can do supermans, like this, and also you can go down and hold, right, left, and back up. That's just a couple of exercises that you can do with lower back pain, and I have more that I can show you with this stress ball. And as I said before, Lower back pain causes Americans $50 billion a year. This stress ball causes $5. And with this stress ball, you can prevent yourself from insurance claims, medical costs, liability, and lawsuits. Now, a simple thing that you can do on your job, seeing as though most people work 9 to 5 every day sitting at a desk, is instead of having a chair, you can have a stress ball. And that way, you can reinforce your core to reinforce your back muscles Preventing lower back pain by keeping upright posture, maintaining yourself, and balancing yourself on the ball. Also, you can use a stress ball to do abdominal exercises to help your lower back pain. You can bring the ball in like this. That way it's easing tension in your lower back, causing the muscles to relax, stretch, release, and contract. You can hold the ball in the air like this. And what this does is it causes you to really reinforce your core and your lower back. And the modified version of that is keeping your legs bent and going up and down, taking deep breaths as you go down and come up. Now, if you can't lay in a supine position or on your back, 
You can do lower back exercises while standing up. You can stretch up, down. You can go to the side. And you can do trunk rotations like this. Once again, this is to reinforce the elasticity in your lower back. And it causes a nice stretch so that it can relieve tension and pain. Only 1% of lower back pain requires surgery. The other 99% can be reinforced through lifestyle factors such as exercise, nutrition, keeping the right abdominal weight, and decreasing your smoking, um, fixing your posture when you're sitting down, a firm mattress when you're going to sleep, and reinforcing your knees just like this when you're picking things up instead of picking things up with your back. Now when I say lower back, I mean the lumbar and sacral region which, if you pay attention, is your lower back from here to about right here. This has been Brandon Fry. Keep fit, fun, and training. I'll see you next time where we'll talk about more fitness. And another program to support our youth is the Made for More Incorporated Youth Empowerment nonprofit organization that is designed for high school students to make sure they are college, career, and citizen ready. I'm Jackie Allen, the host of Word Now. We own our destiny now, the teen talk show that allows teens to tell us what's really going on in the world. Today, we're recording at the Hampton Roads Convention Center. And the topics are respect, relationships, and responsibility. Come join us for the show. Hi, I'm Jackie Allen, the host of Word Now. We own our destiny now, the teen talk show that allows teens to tell us What's really going on in the world around us? Today's topics are relationships, responsibility, and respect. Our first guest is Alina Sanchez. Alina is a business major at Christopher Newport University. She identifies herself with the Spanish community and the American community. Would you please help me in welcoming Alina Sanchez? Hi, Alina. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Backstage, we were talking about respect and how it looks in different cultures. Could you give me the definition of respect in your household? For me, well, for me, not in my household, per se. But for me, respect is a positive esteem of really an attitude towards a situation, a nation, a person, a thing, a religion, pretty much what surrounds us. And, you know, of course, there's different ways of treating respect. Okay. Well, with that being said, is respect always a two-way street, for example, with adults to teens or maybe teens to teens? Mm, that's a complicated question. Definitely, I think from adults to teen, it's, uh, it's not a two-way street. For example, with my father, he, he expects unconditional respect, no matter what he's telling me, what the situation is, I should always just sit there, listen, and take what, he, what he's telling me. And that's respect for him, but it's not respect for me. When it comes to teen to teen, I definitely think it's a two-way street. You know, I'm not gonna treat my best friend how, like a queen, and she's over here treating me like a peasant. Okay, I like that. And on that note, is it wrong then to believe that a person has more knowledge simply because they're older? Definitely. I, I, don't, I wouldn't assume that just because, you know, you're older than me, you may know more math than I do. For example, my grandmother, she's 80, 83 years old. I am a sophomore in college. There are topics that I may discuss with my grandmother that she has no say back to me, just simply because she doesn't know of those topics. 
that's not to assume that she's dumb or I don't deserve respect or I can't give her respect just because she knows less or kn knows more than I do. Okay. I like that. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Do you think respect then always has to be earned or is it just automatically given? Well, wouldn't you say it's a two-way thing? You know, uh, you, don't, you don't give people respect they don't give you. If someone, you know, calls me names and constantly just, you know, just disrespects me, I'm not going to sit there and say, and, yes, sir, okay, you know, you're welcome, thank you. That's just not, I, I wouldn't say that's the right thing to do. I think it's definitely a two-way street. Okay. So then if someone, what I'm understanding is, if someone disrespects you, do you feel like you need to disrespect them? I'd say, I don't know, it, it depends on the situation. If, if I'm with an adult and the adult for some reason disrespects me, I'll have to really, really think about it before I, before I say, before I step out of my teen role <laughs> and, and say, you know, hold on, you know, I don't like what you're doing here and disrespect them back. Or either that, if they are disrespecting me, I think I would find a way to politely just stop them. If it was an adult, if it was a teenager and it was just like a regular day conversation and they were disrespecting me, then I think I'd disrespect them back. Okay, <laughs> I like honest answers, nothing wrong with that. Now I understand you're a sophomore in college, so not too long ago you were in high school mm -hmm. and we were talking about respect in the classroom. So tell me, back in the day when you were in high school, what is it that the teacher had to have to gain that respect? And why didn't that substitute teacher get that same respect? Well, towards anybody, not just in the classroom, I think you get respect from the way you portray yourself. If you walk into an environment and you know, you're standing tall, you're looking at everybody, you know, you're giving yourself this sense of authority that you feel that everybody should give to you. So when a teacher walks in and it's just like, hi guys, you know, low tone, uh, doesn't, really, doesn't really respect themselves, then nobody's really going to respect them. So I think first step is for them to respect themselves and show to everybody who they are. You okay. know, they are the authority in the, in the classroom. So with substitute teachers, first, they don't have much authority because they are a substitute to the main person. So people don't automatically respect them. So if a substitute teacher, I'd say, wants respect, then it'd be like an extra step type of thing. Okay, all right. Well, as a mother, as an educator, I agree with what you were saying about your dad, and we demand that respect at all times. So what feedback could you give me on the other side of the street on how we need to show respect to you simply because you're a person? Well, it's you set the key right there, have a mindset that I am a person and that, you know, we are equal, not, you know, this is my child, I gave birth to this child, or you're my student, you're below me, you know, we are equal. Just because you have more knowledge, just because you're older, doesn't mean you can't treat me with the same respect that you expect that I treat you with. Okay. So I would say des definitely have that mindset locked in that we're equal. Our next guest is Shayla Williams. Shayla is a senior at Kickatan High School with plans of attending North Carolina A&T. She will obtain a degree in elementary education. Help me in welcoming Shayla Williams. Hi Shayla, glad you could join us today. Thank you for having me. All right, now our next topic is relationships. Backstage, we were talking about healthy relationships, whether it is a family member, a best friend, significant other, or just an associate, should have clear rules and boundaries. Can you share with us some of your tips on relationships? Well, being a senior in high school, I have definitely experienced my share of good and bad relationships. Um, like freshman year, you start, you might start with a big group of people and as you get older and you mature, as so do those people, and sometimes not, they do not mature. So growing and like maturing in high school, every grade you seem to like lose a couple of friends. Okay. So by the time you hit senior year, I mean you have a smaller group that you're friends with. 
And guess what? That continues in college. And even adulthood, you, it's, it's good that you know that already because you do. Everybody's like in your circle for a moment and you, you grow. You peel off some, you pick up some more, you learn a few things. So that's pretty good that you already know that. Now our first question says, or it's actually a question about environment. According to statistics, this is an area that is learned by behavior. So do you believe that we are products of our environment? Yes, I'm a firm believer that we are products of our environment. Um, in the household that I grew up in, I grew up in a single mother household, and my grandmother um, always passes down like knowledge. Some seasons, like some seasons, are different from others. So some friends are there for a season. Okay. And being that my grandmother lives with us, she definitely has molded me into becoming who I am today. Like my mother, my grandmother, okay. and I'm definitely a product of where I come from. Good. Shout out to grandma. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. Nothing like Grandma knowledge. <laughs> now, still staying on that note, being a product of your environment, do you think that sometimes our products become a little more negative simply because we are from where we're from? Can you speak on that? Um, not personally, but I know people that have grown up in a perfect household and they become an evil person, like they become someone that their parents would have never raised or never taught to have that behavior and they're very negative, they're upset about everything, they're pretty much mad at life. Okay, true point, very valid. What are some red flags on an unhealthy relationship? Some red flags to me on an unhealthy relationship are, well speaking not just in terms of boyfriend or girlfriend, team members on like a team okay. or teacher student relationships, friendships, um, talking bad about each other, always like being negative. Like I've ne like I don't like to have friendships where I might get called a name and like I'm just supposed to, you know, laugh it off. Like that's how it is in like teen world. Like you're supposed to just you're supposed to just laugh everything off. That's what you're expected to do. Just laugh everything off. And everything shouldn't just be laughed off because, you know, things hurt, like, and things keep, like, keep with you, so. Okay. That's a great point because the unhealthy red flags, it's not just physical abuse sometimes, but that verbal is just as painful. Uh, the verbal, the emotional, all of those. So Definitely. it's good. Yeah. It's hurt more than, you know, anything. And they last longer they re because that bruise will go away, but those words sit in the back of your mind for a very long time. Now, I have a question for you about your friends. If you have a friend that is in an unhealthy relationship, do you say something to her or him or her or his partner, or do you just mind your business? I do all three. Okay. Um, I've had a friend that has gone through physical and verbal abuse in a relationship. And I like to, you know, let her know, like, it's not healthy. You should leave that alone. And sometimes I like talk to that person, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And sometimes after a while, you just, they keep going, you know, you just don't want to keep saying things back. Like after a while, you just get tired of repeating yourself. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> what about when a male is in an unhealthy relationship? Are the signs the same? Some of the signs are the same, I would say. Um, I've never had a friend that has gone, like a male friend that has gone through an abusive relationship, but I've seen it like in movies, TV shows, and things of that nature. Well, why do you think the males don't share it quite as quickly as the females do? They're embarrassed. Males, males are supposed to be alpha. They don't think they should ever go through something like that. They don't expect to go through things of that nature. You know, like a woman, from a woman's standpoint, abusive relationship, I mean, that could happen. That could easily come and go. And a woman, it's expected, it's portrayed, it's on TV, it's everywhere. Like a woman going through abusive relationship, but you don't ever see from a male's point, like a standpoint, you, you don't ever see them going through abuse. So you think they're probably bottling it all up inside? Yes. Okay, so what can we do to help them? Your opinion and your voice counts, it matters. Okay. Just as important as a female's would. Great, great point of view. Thank you for sharing that. That's very important. And thank you for joining us. Today's episode can also be seen on YouTube. Please like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email us. But remember, we own our destiny now. Word now.